Good morning. What's happening? Welcome to the live stream. Okay, let's make sure all the right buttons are pushed. Everything looks good. All right, we're rolling. We are live on YouTube. Hey, Bill Luis here, professional voiceover talent and voiceover coach. And I want to welcome you to the morning live stream. We do this every weekday morning, right around 8 a.m. or so Eastern time for the purpose of helping you get started on the right foot for your day with some inspiration, maybe some strategy, a tip, an insight, something to help motivate or help you be more productive, ultimately more profitable in your voiceover business. Uh, as, I, as I've said many times before, I don't know that I've ever met anyone and the thousands of folks that I've met in voiceover who said, you know what, I really don't want to make money recording voiceover, but it means you have to put on, whoa, okay, I just received a message that said my stream was about to stop, but it would appear that we're here. So as you come into the stream, if you would, uh, or come into, yeah, come in to watch the stream, just get into the uh, live chat, let me know you're here who you are, where you're watching from. Let me know if you can see and hear everything okay, because again, I just briefly received a notification from YouTube that said my stream was about to shut down. I just wanna make sure that everything is okay. Why am I not seeing anything in the chat here this morning? There we go, now it's working. I'm sorry, apparently everything was okay on that end, but on this end, things were a little wonky. So I see you filing in now. I appreciate it. So welcome to the Thursday morning live stream. Today, the question is, what is the proper audio level for voiceover? Uh, this past Friday during our live Q&A, and every Friday morning we do a live VO Q&A, a question uh, was asked about proper level, um, they stated that there was some conflict, they'd received conflicting information. They've heard me say minus 3 dB. They've heard other people say somewhere between minus 9 and minus 12 dB. So what is the proper level? Well, we're really talking about two different things. Let me just get a sip of coffee here. There we go. Okay, so... If you were to have a conversation, you sat down and talked with my son, Alex, who's the audio engineer, and he, he would tell you, as a professional audio engineer, that when you're recording audio, it should be peaking somewhere around minus 9, like between minus 9 and minus 12 dB. The reason for that is that so that you have some headroom for processing. In other words, you need to leave a little room so that afterwards when you add your equalization and compression or whatever processing you use, there's a little room left to, to work with. Because ultimately, and here's the second part of that, when you deliver your product, you want to deliver your product normalized or, in other words, peaking at right around minus 3 dB. Same thing would go for auditions. Sometimes I even make mine a little louder a dB or two louder, uh, because there is a research has shown, the data shows that all things being equal, audio that's a little louder than the other, again, the same piece of audio, one's a little bit louder, is perceived as being higher quality. So in an audition, uh, I'll typically bump it up another dB or two. I've got a really bad frog this morning. So, okay, there we go. I think we're good. Coffee cures everything. So, again, when you're when you're recording, have your audio peak right around minus 9 dB, between maybe nine, minus 9, minus 12. When it's finished, normalize it, which will, uh, to minus 3 dB, which will take the, you know, will raise the level to where the peaks are, are bumping it right about, uh, bumping at minus 3 dB for auditions and for the finished product. So the confusion came in that there's really two different scenarios. There's the initial recording, and then there's the final recording after processing. Now, just to throw another curveball in there, if you're not confused already, let me confuse you even more. Um, 
I use universal audio equipment. Uh, my interface, my audio interface is universal audio, which means the plugins I, that I use are universal audio. The reason I like to use it is not necessarily because it sounds better than other interfaces. There's a lot of great interfaces on the market, but it allows me to process in real time. So, whereas most people would record the audio, then they would go back and then add the equalization, add the compression, add the noise reduction. I'm doing all of that on the, on the front end live. In other words, as you're hearing me right now, my audio is going through the software is being processed through a virtual channel strip, through a de through EQ, through compression, through noise reduction in real time. It's just, it saves me a step. Then I don't have to go back. Not that, that it's a big deal to add it later, but I like to do it in real time. So when I'm done recording, the recording doesn't have to be processed. It's, it's good to go. But again, let me repeat, just to make sure there's no confusion. When you're recording your raw audio, peaking around minus nine to minus 12 dB would be appropriate because it leaves you headroom to process afterwards. And then once you're, once you're uh, done recording, then you add your compression, EQ, whatever processing you use, then normalize to minus three dB, which is going to bump up. Ultimately, is, it will be a little bit louder than minus nine dB. Minus three dB is louder than minus nine dB. And then um, for auditions, again, it's not uncommon for me to bump that up um, another dB or two louder to like minus two dB, minus one dB. You don't want to get crazy with it, but I like for any any edge that I, competitive edge that I can get when I'm auditioning. All right, let's check the live stream and see what's up this morning. Uh, Jeremy in Austin, good morning. Bruce in Louisville, what's happening? Danny in San Diego. DC in Brazil, welcome to the live stream this morning, DC. Um, oh, okay. Hey, Bruce is throwing out a question for our Friday live. Bruce, if you would, if you could re enter that question in tomorrow, just in case I don't remember, I would never want to leave that on my memory because that's not my strong suit. So it's a good question, but if you could bring it up again tomorrow. And what he, Bruce is asking about is explaining how to record a room tone in in a, in a voiceover booth to use in recordings. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Danny, good morning. Fred in Cameroon, what's up? Hope things are going well there. It's a rainy day in Cameroon. Good morning to say, uh, let's see, guy in St. Louis. Oh, Fred says, thanks for the... Uh, the video about uh, the power of five minutes. I'm glad you found that helpful. You know, it's amazing. Uh, in, as a matter of fact, in my, um, I have a weekly webinar. By the way, the people in my voiceover blueprint have a live training session almost every day. We do between 25 to 28 live coaching sessions each month for those in the voiceover blueprint. And so yesterday I was doing a Q&A webinar with my voiceover blueprint students. And we were talking about the power of five minutes because it, it's easy to get stuck where you're thinking, well, what do I do next? And, and I don't, and you're thinking, I don't have time to do it. When the reality is there really is time. The question is how much time and are you willing to utilize the time that you do have? Janet in Florida, hey there, Tim in North Texas. Susan in New Jersey, good morning. Randy in Utah, Philip in Tokyo, hello, Tokyo. Bruce, hey. Uh, here's a question I'm going to bring up this morning since we're talking about audio. Guy asks, when should you not process? The only time that I do not process audio is if I'm, if I'm doing a live session, uh, uh, like over Source Connect, where I'm working with another studio, because typically those kind of sessions, you've got an audio engineer a professional studio and audio engineer on the other end, they're going to do the, that work. But otherwise, I process virtually everything I do unless I'm asked not to. By default, I do. Now, that being said, I don't over-process my audio. In other words, um, it's not uncommon for me to hear a final product and have my my uh, client actually take the audio that I give them and process it even more. That's a pretty common occurrence because I don't want to 
over bake the audio. I want to leave room for them to play with it. It needs to sound polished enough to stand on its own, but not so overly processed that it makes it impossible for the client to kind of mold it and shape it to what they want. I know that sounds like a big order and it's, there's a fine line there. Uh, but I do, you know, I use some EQ, I use some EQ, I use some compression to give it a little more polish. Um, I run noise reduction, you know, even though I'm in, in a, in a voiceover booth, I use uh, Universal Audio C-Suite C-Vox noise reduction, which just makes it sound even cleaner. And uh, I have a de in the sound chain so that when it comes out, it sounds, it sounds polished, but it's not so overtly processed, like so compressed and so EQ'd that there's not room for the client to work with it. Hey, Joe Lee in Minnesota, how are you? Patricia, good morning. Chris in Shelby, Ohio. Barb in Ann Arbor, home of the Michigan Wolverines, the mortal enemy of the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> I remember, you know, growing up as a kid near Columbus, Ohio, when Woody Hayes was coach, uh, he would never actually even say the name Michigan out loud. He would always refer to it as the state up north. And the rivalry was so was so bitter that he he refused to ever spend a penny in Michigan. So they would make sure that they filled up the, the team bus with gas before they crossed over the state line. And uh, they would not buy gas in Michigan. They would not buy food in Michigan. <laughs> the stuff the legends are made of. David in Lexington, Kentucky, good morning. Um, Bruce is asking, is, are, he wonders if there are any VO competitions out there. I, I, you know, there may be, I don't know. It's, it, I don't participate in them, but I mean, there, there, there certainly could be, I, but I just don't know of them. Um, yeah, Bruce says it's going from 99 degrees in Louisville to, uh, to 67 today. Yeah, we were supposed to get up to 96 yesterday. I'm not sure if we did here in Cincinnati, and it's supposed to be like 69 uh, today for the high. Crazy. Uh, Callum in the UK, good, uh, good afternoon to you, Callum. How are you? Good morning from Delaware. Serendini in Brazil. Okay, a couple from Brazil this morning. I love it. Uh, Ed, Lake of the Ozarks, Will in Arkansas. Bruce, thank you for your kind comments. I appreciate that. Uh, Gallon from Cincinnati. Oh, all right, we're neighbors. Love it. Doug in Greensboro, North Carolina. Michelle in Indianapolis. Theo, greetings from the speedy Metro train into the city of Chicago, the city with broad shoulders, the Windy City. Was just there this past Sunday night to see uh, Kevin James. Uh, he did a show at the Rosemont Theater. Funny guy. Loved him in King of Queens, and he's a funny guy. We had a good, we had a good time. Uh, let's see here. Steve in Davidsburg, Michigan. And good morning, Wisconsin. Having a lovely autumn there with 49 degrees right now. You know, fewer states are more beautiful in the fall than Wisconsin. You know, when you when you start moving from the Midwest, well, the Midwest is just beautiful during the fall, but then you get up into, you know, Michigan and Wisconsin and up kind of north and west, and it's just, Vicki and I uh, like to, when we can, go up to like Michigan in the fall just to, just to see the, the trees. It's just gorgeous. And speaking of Michigan, Rusty on the Upper Peninsula, drinking that Michigan cherry coffee. Love it. I love it. Now, today I'm not drinking my Michigan cherry coffee. Vicky picked up some uh, a Hawaiian blend, I guess like a Kona coffee. And so I've been drinking that. I, I like it. Now, don't get me wrong. It's no Michigan cherry, but it's, but it's good. I like it. And um, Charleston, South Carolina. Beautiful, beautiful city. Uh, let's see here. Guys, thanks for being here. I certainly appreciate it. So don't, when it comes to the audio thing, you know, here's, here's the thing. Regard, don't get too hung up on the very specific, like thinking like you've got to hit exactly at minus 9 dB or minus 3 dB, like, like right on the nose. Because if you, if you are overly obsessed about that, you're missing the big picture. And the big picture is you don't want to record at such a low level that you allow a lot of extra noise entered into the recording that doesn't need to be there. And you don't want it to be 
so loud as to clip or distort or to overmodulate. You don't want that. You want to find the sweet spot in between. And as long as you're in between there, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to hit that right on the nose. Uh, this is not like accounting where the numbers have to exactly balance out at the end. What we want is good sounding audio. And if it sounds good, usually it is good. Uh, the idea of the, you know, is it minus nine, minus three? This is to leave you room for processing. That's, that's all that is about. So if you were to record it, you know, and peak at minus five dB or minus four dB, I mean, that's fine as long as it sounds good and then you can process it and then normalize to like minus three dB. You're fine. You're fine. So I, I'm always a little leery and hesitant. Uh, not leery so much as hesitant when I get into talking about specific numbers like that because people think they're like, you know, they were chiseled on stone, you know, from God himself and they're not. These are just, these are, these are guidelines to help you record quality audio. And at the end of the day, your audio just needs to sound good. And you want it to be loud enough to sound, you know, to, to be, to, so that people don't have to, to mess with the volume knob when they're hearing your audition, you know, compared to the other auditions that they're listening to, it should be similar in volume level. So that's, that's all this is about. Well, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, have a good day a prosperous day, a profitable day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning for our weekly Friday morning live Q&A. All right, guys, take care. Make it a good one.